everybody. I've got a question for you. How smart and how efficient are the buildings that you live in? Here's a few examples. What you see on this slide is a commercial building. It was built in the, built in the year 2000. Uh, it looks like a, a nice modern architecture. Um, this building's built in Singapore in, a, in the jungle dig digital district. And uh, what you can't see to the naked eye here is that this building is touted as one of the smartest buildings in the entire world. In 2013, the owners of this building retrofitted it with 60,000 sensors, 60,000 sensors that allow the operators to understand to a high degree of precision and fidelity how this building's being used at any given time. So much so that if there were the same degree of sensors in this room, it would recognize that there are the 100 people in this room and the temperature of the room is rising and it might, mean, it might mean that we need to decrease the heat at the room level. It's very smart. Digital technology has enabled that. In the year 2013, they spent 1.5 million Singaporean dollars to retrofit these sensors and build a digital platform to build upon it. And they received $400,000 in savings in year one and 15% energy efficiency year one. I couldn't help but put a slide in of my family. This is my home. Uh, this is uh, a house that was built in 1961, and it's inhabited by myself, my wife, and my three daughters, Ruby, Lily, and Ella. This house is inefficient. It, is, it, is leak, it has a leaky envelope, and in places that I'm not even aware of. And I've been working on sustainability issues for the last 10 years. I wrote my master's thesis on the business case for sustainability in the house building construction sector. I know about, I know about the problem here. And I, every day I, I think about how the future generation is living in this home and we're not becoming more energy efficient. We're not engaging digital technology. We're not investing in keeping up on our home's footprint to achieve uh, uh, a net zero climate target in the future. And so I live with this day to day and I think in both of these examples, it's important to point out that 80% of the predicted building stock in 2050 exists today. Today. So new builds are building with, with smart and climate and net zero targets in mind. But what about the 80% of buildings today? Digital, digital technology and the application of it can play a role in that, just like the JTC building. My home has zero sensors in it, <laughs> and I could probably leverage it. So the IEA suggests, uh, re re created a report in 21, 2021 that suggests that we need to triple our investment in the building sector. It suggests that we need to five times our energy intensity, uh, our energy efficiency intensity, even though it's been declining per building over the last few years. We need to five times it. The building sector and its usage accounts for 13% of Canada's greenhouse gas emissions. This is a big problem, especially if 80% of the stock exists today. But this is not just about climate targets. This is also about economic issues and social issues. Economically speaking, the JTC Summit building, they had a very beneficial economic um, a reward for investing in the, in the sensors that they, that they made. And there are other economic gains to be had as well. Uh, at the same time, there are barriers to access those funds, and there's barriers that are required to gain those economic benefits. For example, um, it, there might be economic barriers for folks that are in marginalized communities or lower socioeconomic statuses to gain access to some of the investments that allow us to move to a climate zero, net zero future. So this, uh, this is a lightning rod. Buildings are a lightning rod for social, economic, and environmental issues. The Energy Futures Lab has been addressing this question in the, we're calling it the Digital Innovation for Net Zero Buildings Challenge. How might we accelerate enable the application of digital technology and buildings to accelerate our progress towards net zero targets in a just and equitable way. Of course, and as the Energy Futures Lab does, we do this in a multi-stakeholder way. We bring people together, together to talk about the complexity and tease out the complexity of those challenges. And not just talk, but try to figure out where we can actually intervene in this system in a meaningful way. And so over the course of the year, we've been interviewing folks, several folks in this room, thank you for your participation, uh, and we've been conducting lots of workshops with several people of you, uh, that are in this room, thanks to your participation. 
and we continue to try to tease out the complexity of this issue. So I've characterized this here as a, a ball of tightly woven colored string. <laughs> and here, what, we, uh, what it's meant to represent is that this is an interdependent, interconnected, complex issue. And even though we try to tease some of the complexity out, every time we tug on one of those strings, once we think we've got an end to it, it tightens the ball of string. And so where do we start? We start together. And so this, this group of people, 38 people from different parts of the digital technology system, from the energy system, from the building system, uh, have come together to start to explore this. These are funders, educational institutions, uh, environmental nonprofits, retired citizens that care about this issue, building owners and, and operators, and, and so on and so forth. Have identified four key areas that we think we need to innovate within. And again, we can't think about alone, but these are four key areas that they've, uh, they've identified. Firstly, in, or in order to enable the application of digital technology, firstly, we need to think about demonstrating business models that are successful, and many exist in the world today. Secondly, we need to think about how we can collect and share data, not just collect them with the sensors like the JTC Summit, but we need to figure out how we can share that data with one another so we can put the data to work. So we can put digital innovation to work. We can put those experts that are in that, that domain to work and, uh, and figure out solutions that weren't even available or, or in our consciousness prior to. Thirdly, to enable the application of digital, te digital technology, we need to influence policy targets and, to, and incentives to make sure that people aren't left behind with some of the decisions that are being made and some of the targets that are being set. And we're doing so in a way that's moving us at the scale and urgency of, of the change that's required. Lastly, we need to make sure that just and equitable solutioning is, is on the cards. And what that means is we need to make sure that we do it all that we can to engage people in different ways and to think through different processes by which we can consider not leaving people behind and or creating unintended consequences from the decisions we've made. And we could actually in, 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 uh, unintendedly create adversity or inequity in some of the decisions that are made. There's several examples of that. And so where we're at in the process is that we had a workshop two, three weeks ago where we start to brainstorm some solutions. We don't have all the answers, but where can we start to learn more? Where do we think we want to learn more? And where might we want to start taking some collaborative action? So we started identifying some solutions. There's, about, there's a few on this slide, there's 15 right now, and there's more coming. But we've got a workshop in two more weeks where we'll, we'll evaluate the stock of those, and we'll figure out which three to five we might want to collaborate and work on together. And so this is a perfect opportunity for the brain trust that's in this room, for the experience of people that are in this room to come and join us. <laughs> uh, if you know what, if you have solution ideas in mind that relate to some of what I've shared here today, if you have resources or connections that are, that are connected to this work, please let us know. This is an opportune time before we start prioritizing action to figure out where we need to think more carefully and more discerningly about the entire system. Please join us in the breakout room to share more. And then, of course, I say this all the time. Please, if you're interested in this work and you'd like to contribute to it, even if that's just staying informed around what we're up to, please let us know. Join us in the breakout room. Or we'll also send me an email address uh, at, my, at my email address on the slide. And lastly, I must say a big thanks to the RBC Tech for Nature Foundation for being an ongoing sponsor and funder uh, of this work. Thank you very much.